Good morning, how are we on this sort of cloudy, sort of sunny Wednesday morning? I thought we could talk about health and fitness myths that should die. So I've narrowed down five, which I hear all the time. But also I see cause so much stress when people message me or when I speak to clients as well. And it's all unnecessary because they're not true. And inversely, you could see these as maybe five health and fitness reminders that you might need to hear today. Okay, so. I made notes on my trusty phone this morning when I was thinking of them. And the first one I have is that exercise needs to be hard to be effective. How many times have we heard this? The other thing that we tend to hear in regards to this is that if you're not sore after a workout, then it hasn't been effective either. Now, firstly, let's just debunk that. DOMS, which stands for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness, which is the pain that you get after doing a workout, maybe the day after or the day after that, and also sweating during a workout, is not a good sign of having a good workout. In terms of sweating, it's just your body's mechanism to cool you down. Some people sweat a lot more than others. I never sweat when I work out, unless I'm doing heated yoga or maybe HIIT training or maybe a run in really hot weather. That's pretty much solely when I sweat. However, Josh, he sweats buckets, like he has to take a towel to the gym. So some people are more prone to sweating than others. And obviously if you're doing a really intense workout, your body's gonna be warm and it's gonna to need to cool down. So you're likely to sweat a little bit more. But when you're doing resistance training, you have a lot more rest, so you might not sweat as much. Secondly, delayed onset muscle soreness tends to come from when you do something new. So if you do a movement or an exercise that you haven't done before, or maybe you lift a heavier weight, you'll notice that you have delayed onset muscle soreness. But the more you train and the more you do those movements, you might not notice it as much. I remember the DOMS I got when I was just starting out in calisthenics and resistance training. And my gosh, were they bad. So we've debunked that. You don't need to worry about DOMS and sweating being a sign of a good workout. There are many signs of a good workout and overall how you're progressing is going to give you a good idea of how your workouts are going. But more importantly, there are so, so, so many benefits to exercising which have absolutely nothing to do with burning calories or building muscle or making progress with that specific exercise. It might just be your opportunity to leave the house and see other humans, if you're me, for example. So it can be great for your mental health. Obviously, there's a certain level of stress relief that comes with working out, but it also helps so many lifestyle factors that go hand in hand with improving your health, such as improving the quality of your sleep. Maybe you're moving a little bit better, so doing your groceries, walking upstairs, or picking up your children might be a little bit easier. Improving health measures, such as your blood pressure, your VO2 max, or your resting heart rate. And also giving you something else to focus on and other goals, rather than just purely looking at weight loss, weight gain, or whatever you're trying to achieve. And one last note on this, moving your body is fantastic. You guys know I'm an advocate and a fan of just doing what feels good. You don't have to have a program if you don't want to. You don't even have to have a specific goal you're working towards, like me. It might just be that you do it to move your body for enjoyment and for a bit of routine. So movement is amazing, but your body also needs rest too. So you don't need to exercise every day. You should have rest days and you shouldn't feel bad about that. Your body needs rest to recuperate and to recover physiologically, but it also just gives you a break mentally and some time in your day. So don't feel guilty to have rest days. They are important and they are necessary. All right, point number two is that you have to give up foods that you love or socializing to be healthy, quote unquote healthy, or to lose weight. I have made so, so many videos on nutrition, on calorie deficits, and I think most of us know rationally that this is not true. I think it's so, so common to fall into that negative pattern of thinking, deeming foods as either inherently good or bad. I bang on about this all the time, but we always wanna take a long-term mindset. So what we do, we wanna be able to make it sustainable so that we can consistently do it for a long period of time. And if you start to over restrict certain foods or stop yourself from being in social situations or enjoying a night out, for example, it's only going to make it harder to stay motivated and to be able to be consistent for a period of time. On the flip side, staying social and including the foods that you love, in moderation of course, are gonna be helping you to stay motivated, to stay consistent, and to be able to enjoy it, which is really, really important. I always say that willpower will only last so long, and if you're being ultra restrictive with what you're doing, you're only gonna make that period of time even shorter. 
Not to mention that there are no good and bad foods. You might have foods that are slightly more nutrient dense or they might be lower energy and you might have some that are higher energy and maybe less nutrient dense. But that's really looking at the micro scale. If you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, these foods all have a place in a balanced diet and they should be included in your diet if you want them to be. Next up is something that I'm pretty sure we can all relate to and that is that you should always be motivated. I don't think I have ever met anybody that is motivated every single day. And I know personally that that motivation is definitely a roller coaster. There's days where you wake up and you feel highly motivated, everything feels like it's easy, you feel so much more positive in your mindset, and there's gonna be days where you wake up and everything just feels like a struggle. And that is okay, it's totally, totally normal to feel that way. If you are working and progressing towards a goal, those are the days when you start to just rely on the habits that you have built and just try to put one foot in front of the other. However, I'm also a fan of just saying to yourself, you know what, it's okay, I'm gonna give myself a couple of days, I'm gonna give myself a week, even a month off, because in the scheme of things, when you zoom out on that timeline and have a look at what you're trying to achieve, that one day, one week, one month, or whatever it might be, is going to pale into insignificance into all the other times that you're motivated as well. Now I know, and this is from personal experience, that sometimes those slumps in motivation feel like they're going on forever and that they're just not going to end. But I promise you, there are always going to be brighter days ahead. So you just have to keep pushing through and doing what you can until you get there. At some point, you will find that motivation again and you can ride that wave as long as you have it. But you know that there's always gonna be a dip again at some point. That is just the way life is. We're not motivated all the time to do things. It's at these times that I like to think about doing the minimal effective dose, which is kind of like where I've been recently, probably for the last four or five months. It's just doing enough to kind of keep me ticking along and maintaining what I've been working towards. But I'm okay with not feeling like I have to progress towards any goals, not feeling like I have to wake up and spring out of bed and feel like I have so much energy and I'm super excited to face the day because that's not necessarily the way it is. But it also gives me the opportunity to put the work in in other places. And that's usually in self-care. So it's really important to be able to find that balance but you shouldn't be beating yourself up if you just don't feel motivated because it is completely normal. Okay, sorry, I just had to jump out onto a client check-in call, but I am back. Next up, point number four, is that less calories are better. Interestingly, I was actually just discussing this with my client, but we were talking about really restrictive calorie totals. So when people go into a calorie deficit, they often think that it makes sense that less food is going to be better. Like the bigger the deficit, the faster the fat loss, the better the situation. And while yes, a bigger deficit will elicit faster fat loss, that's not really the whole picture because firstly, it's not sustainable for the long term and it's gonna be very hard to stay consistent. But secondly, you've gotta think about all the things that that could impact. Firstly, it's going to make everything feel a little bit harder. If you restrict your calories to a significant amount, your body is going to adapt. No matter what deficit we put our bodies in, it's always gonna have a physiological response to try and protect you. But the bigger that deficit, the bigger that response. So let's say you're looking to lose around five or 10 kilos and you put yourself in a 1000 calorie deficit, which would be absolutely huge in comparison to your total daily energy expenditure. Your body is pretty quickly gonna to signal to you that it needs a little bit more energy to sustain itself. It'll do this through things like increasing your hunger levels. So you're gonna feel hungrier, something that we would expect to see in a calorie deficit, but not to an extreme extent. Now, when you continue to not give it any energy, it's gonna be forced to take action. So it'll try to conserve as much energy as possible. It'll do this through things like making you sleep a little bit longer. It might slow down your movements a little bit. You might walk less. You might not be able to train as hard as you were before. And all these are just mechanisms to try and protect itself against essentially starving to death. Now, a lot of the time we don't really notice these things, especially initially, we don't notice that it's happening. But over time, we'll really notice it has an impact on our energy and our motivation. This is a point that's really important to remember, but I think is often forgot. And that is that your body needs energy, even on the days that you're not doing anything. If you woke up and just lay in bed all day, your body still needs a significant amount of energy to keep you alive and your body functioning. So it's important to give your body what it needs. It needs energy, and when we're talking about energy, we're talking about calories. So you do need to eat and you need to drink on the days even when you're resting. 
I could probably go into so much depth in this point that I would be talking for hours, so I won't go into that amount of detail because there are so many different factors that come to it. But to bring it back to our original point, saying that a bigger deficit is better than a smaller deficit, you have to think about the fact that it's just simply not gonna be maintainable for the long term. And ultimately, your body is going to put mechanisms in place to make fat loss harder for you in the long term if you continue to put yourself in a really significant deficit. So for that reason, taking a slow and steady approach is always gonna be the better option. Plus, you can actually enjoy yourself too, which kind of blends in with every other point that we've discussed so far, such as being able to socialize, maintaining motivation. And finally, something that is very close to my heart, well, all these points are very close to my heart, but this one I feel like is something that I have spoken about quite a few times, but I feel like I could speak about forever. And that is that people believe if their physical health has improved, then their mental health will also improve or that their relationship with their body will also improve. This is just simply not true. If you do not have a good relationship with your body the way it is now, losing weight or changing the way it looks will not necessarily improve how you feel about it. Again, I was literally just talking to my client about this, but I have said this so many times now that before I lost weight, I had a better relationship with my body than I did after I lost weight. And it's very much a work in progress still, because firstly, I still have a bit of an identity issue where I'm not really sure which one I am, because I think I'm one, but I can see another and it doesn't really match up in my head. But secondly, I was and am far more critical of myself and my body now that I've lost weight than I was previously. And it wasn't even yesterday. I lost weight around seven years ago and these issues are very much still there. And I see this time and time again. People think that losing weight is going to improve the way they think about themselves. Then they lose weight and they realize they feel exactly the same. If not, they're even more critical. And also I've mentioned the balance between physical health and mental health a few times. Just because one is improving, it doesn't mean naturally that the other one is improving as well and vice versa. There's been many times where I guess from an outside perspective, my physical health hasn't been so good. Maybe I've got excess weight or I'm not exercising regularly, for example, but my mental health has been really, really good. And vice versa, where my mental health has been on the floor, yet my physical health probably to the outside eye looks like it's better. That's why I always think it's really important to have lots of different goals and things that you want to achieve rather than focusing solely on one. And also taking a bit of a two-prong approach of having to work on the mental side of it and the physical side of it. And I often say that the mental side of weight loss and health and fitness is often much, much more challenging than the physical side. And just on a side note, there is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to improve the way that your body looks to you. There is absolutely no shame in wanting to train to look a certain way or want to lose weight because you think it's going to make you feel better. I just think it's important to be aware that it's not always the case that if your physical appearance improves, that your mental health and your relationship with your body will also improve as well. All right, guys, that was it. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet because I'm doing this in between calls today, but it's just something that I felt like I needed to get off my chest and I wanted to talk to you guys about. Sorry, Hugo was scratching at the door. He's gotten really fluffy recently. He's nearly as big as me. But I'm gonna leave this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any thoughts, you can leave them down below. But otherwise, I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to be nice to yourself.